Tango and Sky is perhaps one of the most popular pieces uh, out there, and it's a lot of fun to play. But to really get the, the rhythms right, it's, it's critical that we study what you have at the opening of the score, right? So you have a dotted eighth note. So think 16th notes. So one, two, three, and then you have a 16th note tied to yet another 16th note. So that gives you another two, right? So one, two, three, one, two. And then you have an eighth note, so another two 16th notes. So it's pairing one, two, three, one, two, one, two. And then to finish it off, you have yet one single 16th. So one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, three, one, two. The last uh, 16th note is an open E, right? Uh, the score requires that you start on a mezzo piano and uh, you start with your A minor chord and your index finger collapse to grab an F, right? There we go. Right? So you're playing with uh, triple stops on the first three strings and then you move upstairs to the second three strings. So index, middle, ring for the right hand and thumb, middle, index, right? For the right hand on the second gripping. So out, in, out. Notice that I uncollapse my index finger. Keep your index finger on the B string. You know, collapsing like this, uncollapsing like that. The melody. Right? Right? So you're supposed to keep that top melody, that F, right, ringing as you're playing very short stops uh, inside, right? Right? Notice that I bring my thumbs, if you focus on my right hand. I bring my fingers right back to the strings to mute that and make a staccato sound. Right? Keeping the accompaniment very quiet, right? Right? So you have a very quick tango kind of glissando. And then you are doing the same thing, but you're in triplets. So outside, then the bass on a D string, then uncollapse again outside, right? I cut cut the soprano there. Now keep two and three where they are, right? Well, for the most part, one as well. Right? You're gonna add your G, right? That tucks in to a G flat. Play your bass. Collapse your one. Right? So as you're in triplets, three bullet. Right? Right? And keep the one this time on the E string. Two is gonna grab the B, and three and four are gonna stack on the second fret as well on the G and the B string. Right? And this is what I call the dancing pinky. Right? Very quiet, right? And it says piano subito in the score anyway. Right? And that's forte right there. So you have the A and the open E and B. Triple chuck. E bass, right? Right? You have the E and the, and the A. And you all of a sudden have an, an E7 chord. Here. And now the next part is tricky. One, two, four, right? And you tie that G over to the next measure and you kind of stack two, three on top of four, right? All is it's B flat, D, and G, all in the third fret. One is right behind it on the on, on the second fret for the A. And here comes perhaps the most difficult part of the piece. Right? So you have A, hammer to one. I suggest hammering that as well. You know, you could play it, but I suggest just, right, hammer, C sharp. One comes over to grab the E and play that with I. So thumb, index. This is the right hand. Now, you're going to do Thumb, index, middle, ring. As 
you set up the G, the B flat, and the C sh on the fourth, third, and second string, and then your ring finger grabs the first string. Right, and right where you are, back to the G string, and this is played by the thumb. Hammer two, and then one comes downstairs to the second string for the C sharp, middle finger and then jump all the way up to pretty much ninth position. Two and three are moved over, right? And the reason for it is you don't want to use four and three because you need four down below. So use three and two, thumb, index, middle, and then your pinky is going to, you probably cannot see it because of the ring finger, right? So, right? And then accompany a second E with a D bass. Land your bar on the tenth fret, A bass, D bass, pinky on, bass, pinky off. Together with bass, pinky off. Right, this time it's just a double chuck. For, for the most part, there were triple chucks. seventh chord on twelfth position, right? Right? So ring, middle, index, and then the thumb goes across all the strings, right? Then you're going to do it over here in ninth position, sixth position, right? Notice that it's fully diminished chord, so it's compacted. The index finger is right over the second finger, which is Index finger on the D string, second finger on the B string, ring finger on the G string, and pinky on the first string. And then you get yourself to the second position. This is no longer a fully diminished seventh chord, now you have a dominant chord.